scripture says, Jesus told the devil he was God in Matthew chapter 4. In verse 1, Jesus is being led in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. In verse 7 of chapter 4 of Matthew, Jesus said to the devil, and it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Who was the devil tempting? Jesus. What was Jesus' response? Don't tempt the Lord your God. Here you have it. From Jesus' own lips, I am God. But let's continue. Jesus told the Jews he was God. In John chapter 8, verse 58 and 59, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. So he passed by. Compare that, the I am statement, to Exodus 3, 13 and 14. <clears throat> then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Jesus said he was God right here, saying he existed before Abraham, echoing the words of the name of God to himself, which God answered to Moses when asked about his name. But if you have doubt on this, we see why in John chapter 10, they picked up stones to stone him again. And the Jews responds in John chapter 10, verse 31 to 33. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works I have shown you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. <clears throat> Thomas calls Jesus God and is not rebuked by him. If Jesus was just a prophet or a good teacher or just a good man, why not rebuke the blasphemy of his mouth? In John chapter 20, verse 28 and 29, and Thomas answered and said to him, to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believe. Besides Thomas, the other apostles called Jesus God. John chapter 1, John calls Jesus the word of God and says that the word was God who is Jesus manifested in human form. Matthew, in chapter 1, <clears throat> calls Jesus Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. Jesus accepted worship and called for it in John chapter 5, verse 23. They all shall honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. How does one honor the Father? But by worship and praise. So Jesus demands the same. <clears throat> we see Jesus also saying that we should baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But in that same chapter, Matthew 28, we see the disciples, they met Jesus. And they came to Jesus in verse 9 of chapter 28. And they held him by the feet and worshipped him. They worship Jesus. How does the angels and the apostles react towards someone doing that? They react towards by that by rebuking them. Just see how in Acts chapter 10, verse 25, 26, how Peter does to Cornelius. He tells him, stand up. I myself am also a man. And we also see in Revelation chapter 28, 22, verse 8 and 9, John starts worshiping the angel. And the angel says, see that you don't do that. For I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the word of this book, worship God. <clears throat> but yet Jesus accepted worship. And in Matthew 28, what does happen? What happens in Matthew 28? Jesus says, go baptizing, not in just the name of the Father, but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three. Now, Jesus calls himself the beginning and the end 
a name for God alone in Revelation 22, verse 12 to 16. Uh, who's the beginning and the end, even in the Quran? That's God. Now, you read Isaiah 44, verse 6. This is talking about God. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and the last. Besides me, there is no God. So even the Quran, like I said before, Surah 57, verse 3, says, He is the first and the last, the most high, the most near, and he has perfected knowledge of all things. He is the first and the last, the outer and the inner, and he has knowledge of all things. That's talking about God, but guess who is the first and the last? Who claims to be the first and the last in Revelation? That's Jesus. Jesus claiming to be the first and the last in Revelation 22, verse 12 to 16. Oh, brothers and sisters, Jesus is God himself. <clears throat> Jesus calls himself the shepherd of Israel, which is God. In John chapter 10, verse 11 and 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they are known by me. Now, read Psalms 23, verse 1. Who's the shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. Yahweh, Jehovah is my shepherd. Jesus acknowledged himself in John 10, verse 11 and 14, as the good shepherd. Acknowledging himself, he acknowledged that he is good. Jesus there is claiming to be God because no one is good except God in Matthew 19, verse 17. This is why Jesus always separated himself from all all others as calling others evil his sept himself in matthew chapter 7 verse 11 jesus says if you then being evil why does he say if we being evil no jesus separates himself from everyone else in matthew 12 verse 34 jesus says how can you being evil why he doesn't say how can we being evil in john chapter 8 verse 46 jesus says which of you convicts me of sin Oh, brothers and sisters, if I was to tell my mom or anyone who knows me, which of you convicts me of sin, they have a long list to tell you about because I have so much sins in my life. But if you tell about Jesus and no one was able to convict them of sin, you know why? Because Jesus is God. Jesus said that he shared the glory with his father before the world began. In John 17, verse 5, he says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. <clears throat> but yet, God doesn't share his glory with no one. Isaiah 42, verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I would not give to another, nor my praise to carve images. But yet, the Father shares glory with Jesus. Because Jesus is God along with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Jesus called God his Father. In doing so, he will say he had the same nature as God the Father. The Jews understood that. We read in John 5, verse 17 to 18, But Jesus answered that my Father has been working until now, and I've been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. In John 3, 16, the verse says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Now, when God makes, he creates man, animal, trees, mountain, plants, sun, moon, seas. But when God begets, he begets his own nature, which is God. So in Jesus calling himself the Son of God, he was calling himself God. It's just like when the scripture calls the sons of the prophets prophets because that was what they were. Read for that, for that reference, read in 1 Kings 20, verse 35 to 38, where we see a person that's called the son of the prophets being actual prophet. Now, Jesus claimed to forgive sins, which thing can only be done by God. <clears throat> because, you know why? Forgiving sins can only be done by God because <laughs> you're forgiving someone else's sin and only God can do that. 
just like when David sinned by killing Uriah, he said, against you, you only have I sinned. But Jesus is able to forgive sins. The Jews recognize that in Mark chapter 2, verse 5 to 7, when Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. The scribes that were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts said, why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Every sin that is done is done against God, as I said in Psalms 51, verse 4. Now, God the Father calls Jesus God in Hebrews 1, verse 8. But to the Son, he said, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Jesus called himself the Son of Man, who is seen with God and ruler and owner of the whole world. <clears throat> we can see this in Matthew 26, verse 62, 65, where Jesus was calling himself the Son of Man. He wasn't just calling himself just a regular man. He was calling himself the one that in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, was to come in the clouds and was to receive all dominion, all the glory, all power, and was going to have every nation under his feet. Oh, brothers and sisters, Jesus wasn't calling himself just a regular man. Yes, Jesus was man, but yet he was God. In Jesus, God came as a man. <clears throat> well, when, when I, like, I don't like it when people say, oh, but... Well, the Bible says that God is not a man. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, those are verses in the Old Testament when God wasn't a man, when God wasn't human. But yet God became a human. And he became a human in Jesus Christ. Those references are within the Old Testament times. It's not in the New Testament times. You never read in the New Testament, oh, God is not a man. No, you don't. Um, if you... We read um, Psalms 110, verse 1, where it says, The Lord said to my Lord. There's two Lords. There's three Lords in the Bible. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But yet there's one Lord, which is God. They are Lord. They are God. You know? So I, there's three persons in the Trinity. Three persons and one God. But Jesus is God. The scripture is clear on that. 